So I, I changed the presentation just a little bit because, you know, from a, from a preparedness standpoint, the medication preparedness, many of you, many of you already know how to prepare and actually do a very, very good job. Can you tell me, a few people, can you tell me what you do and you expect a big storm coming? What do you do? Right, so make sure you have enough medication. So one thing I just wanted to make everyone aware of is there are certain policies and procedures that are in place um, at Health Wing and in many other health plans that whenever there is a state of emergency declared, automatically the health plans are mandated to actually relax many of our restrictions and actually turn off our refill too soon policy. So in the event, again, as, as, as Adam and Brian had talked about, in the event there is a, a storm like we had in October, uh, a tornado like we had somewhat recently, and many other storms, what Health New England and many other plans do is we automatically turn some of the restrictions, some of the prior authorizations, the step therapies, and quantity limits, and other refill too soon, refill too soon um, policies off. Because again, obviously what we want to make sure is that you have enough medication in the event you know there was a flood and you actually lost some of the medicine. So all those policies are relaxed and you would be able to continue to fill uh, the medication. With, Again, obviously with a standard co-payment, but again, you'd be able to have access. Uh, more for me, just to get a better feel of the, of the group. Can you tell, can I uh, have a raise of hands of how many people are h &E members? Wow, that's a, that's a great, 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 um, great attendance. Um, and then I'm gonna ask a few more questions. Can, um, can you tell me how many people in the room are on five, five medications? And can you keep your hands raised as I sort of go along? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So again, obviously there are many different medications and obviously there are many different people in the room that utilize them. Medication is just getting more and more complicated. Um, one time I actually asked the question of how many people and how many pills do you actually take? And I actually had someone raise their hand and they actually take 87 pills a day. 87, so that's not different medications, but actually different pills a day. So when Sarah introduced me earlier, she introduced me as the director of pharmacy and case manager. Um, what that really means is the pharmacists at Health New England and the nurses at Health New England report to me. Just so you're aware from a resource standpoint, there are four pharmacists that work at Health New England. There are approximately 20 nurses that work at Health New England. There are four social workers, three doctors. Um, I'm trying to remember if there's... Um, there are um, several wellness folks that actually are, are here as well that works so just so you know if you have questions help wing really should be a great resource for you be it medications be it procedures be it a variety of different things we have over 10 percent of our total employment our clinical staff that have either worked in hospitals worked in provider offices um, or a variety of different sites so we're going to go ahead and get started again my topic is prescription preparedness um, knowing again, so, so again, sort of following the theme of, of tornadoes and different things, um, I know healthcare today really is, really is confusing. I mean, there, there's just more and more things that are happening, and specifically with Medicare Advantage, you know, you look, you'll look and you'll see some of these terms that are up here, and I know many of you need to deal with these terms on a day-to-day -day basis the $4 program, the donut hole, the coverage gap, deductibles, MTMP. I'm gonna attempt to try to answer some of these questions, but if I don't get to them, please catch me at, if you catch me off the side when I'm done. I will be staying around later to uh, answer any additional questions. So, actually before I go here, how many people have actually seen me present in the past? Small number. Um, so, some of this I actually have gone through in the past, but it looks like there's a, there's a 
a relatively new group here. Um, so are generics as safe as brand name medications? The, the general answer there is yes. Um, I think one of, what I try to use as a gauge is my mother takes several medications. And all the medications that she is currently on are generics. So I don't think I would actually allow my mother to actually take something that wasn't safe. Um, so generics go through the same rigorous level of, of restrictions through the FDA as brand A medications. Um, where it is relatively somewhat different is on some of these very, very specialized medications that are needed for transplants. At times there can be some differences there that your physician may request a brand name medication. But in general, the majority of generic medications are equivalent to brand name medicine. At Help New England, our overall plan currently has 85, 86% of all the prescriptions that are filled for our, for our plan um, are generic. So 14% are brand name. Unfortunately, that same 14% brand name actually account for 80% of the cost. So 86% of the use accounts for about 15% of the cost and then vice versa. So we all know brand name medications overall are very expensive. Again, there are some very, very good reasons at times to need to use a brand name medication when there is not a generic available. And even in the event at times if there is a generic available, um, there may be some unique scenarios where you may need to use that. Um, are brand name drugs made in better factories? The answer again is no. There is oversight. Um, at times, many of you may have actually heard in the news that at times there are some issues that have been that have been found by generic manufacturers. I just want you also to be aware that there are issues at times. Many of you are aware of some of the issues that have occurred more recently with J and J. Johnson & Johnson, other, other very large pharmaceutical companies. So there is very, very rigorous oversight by the FDA. Um, so again, you should feel overall very, very comfortable in utilizing a generic medicine. Why do they look different? A variety of reasons. This, this typically has to do with the manufacturer, the generic, of the generic, um, where they have different logos. Your brand name medicine may be an oval and your generic um, medicine may be, may be round with a different number. I would strongly recommend to not go by just the way your pills look. If you ever, if, if you see a difference, if you see a difference, you should always question it. Ask your pharmacist. There are a variety of different ways to actually determine based on the numbers on your pill and the shape of the pill exactly what medicine that is. You could actually call your pharmacist and you could say, you know, you've given me this medicine, um, I'm concerned, and it has this imprint on one side and this imprint on another. The pharmacist, just by that imprint, can actually tell you exactly what that medicine is. So we do hear a lot of times of errors that do happen um, upon dispensing of, of prescription. So I would attempt to, or I would strongly encourage, if you do see a difference, that you that you would at least inquire. Why are generics less expensive? I think many of you read magazines, and many of you watch television. Um, I think many times, especially later into the course of, of the medications um, tenure, a lot of times what it really has to do is advertising. Advertising is extremely, extremely expensive. Earlier on, the research and development obviously is also very, very expensive. Um, but much of what um, the pharmaceutical companies are spending many, many dollars on is around advertising. So this list is a little different than last year when I presented this. I think last year when I presented this, there were a lot of new generics that were coming out into the marketplace. How many people, can someone tell me what was the biggest drug that went generic last year? Correct, Lipitor. So Lipitor, um, went generic. Um, it was about an 11 billion dollar drug. Um, that's with a B billion, um, and that obviously has gone generic, and that caused a lot of confusion in the marketplace. There were these 
$4 cards, there were a variety of different things. Lipitor obviously is a, a very, very good medication. Um, but, but again, the list here, you probably won't notice as many large names like Lipitor, Diavan, um, and many other medicines that went. But there are a few. One of the, one of the big ones I would say is Lidoderm. This is a medication that is used um, for a type of nerve pain um, that will be going generic actually this month. Niospan is another medicine that will be going generic um, again this month, which is used for high triglycerides or different types of um, cholesterol. Um, another one that probably you've seen people probably recognize by the butterfly is Lunesta. So Lunesta will also be going generic um, sometime in November. Um, one, the, probably the largest one on this list that will be going generic um, and is one of the more commonly used medicines um, for Health New England is Cymbalta. So Cymbalta will be going generic um, as of December 2013, at least currently. Um, there are many lawyers currently at Eli Lilly attempting to um, extend the trademark or extend the patent, um, but currently we are expecting that to go generic um, as in December 2013. Yeah. Right. So, so, so actually, you know what? Are there mics in the audience? Um, so, so there's a great question in the front, or a great statement in the front, um, which was exactly going to be my, my, um, my statement. Was um, so even those, even though these prescriptions are going generic, typically there's at least a six to eight month time frame before the medicine actually truly goes down in price. So what you would see, as many of you saw with Lipitor, is Lipitor went generic. Actually, I believe it was. November 30th. Um, so um, in December, your co-payment actually would have decreased. So it would have went, if it was a tier three medicine, it would have went from $65 down to $10. But the actual cost of the medicine would have probably only gone from about $150 down to $135. So the reason why I actually bring that up, and it's very important to this group or anybody that has Medicare Advantage, is different than commercial insurance or different than insurance that you receive from your employer, all of you are actually very concerned about the actual cost of the medicine because the cost of the medicine will get you into the donor hole. Right? Nobody wants to be in the donor hole um, because typically what happens obviously is when you go in the donor hole, you then need to begin to pay either all or a much larger percentage of the medicine. So. With Lipitor, when Lipitor went generic, what we heard and what we saw was people flocking and wanting to change from their current medicine um, that they had been on to Lipitor. But what actually ended up unfortunately happening is while somebody may have been on a drug like Simvastatin or Pratistatin that was costing approximately $10 to $15, they switched from that medicine to generic Lipitor and they were paying a generic copayment but you went from paying from your cost in the sense of putting you into the donor hole, went from $15 a month to about $135 a month. So I think it's something to just caution everybody with. If you're on a medicine and your medicine and you're okay with it, just be cautious in changing just because something went generic. I know many of you probably talk to your neighbors and your friends and you know, Johnny might be on Lipitor, um, and it's working great. Again, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Because um, we did. We saw a, a, a very, very large number of people switching from being on a certain medicine and doing well to switching to Lipitor. Just recognize that at times your body is stabilized. You may have been on a drug like Simvastatin, which interacts with Coumadin, and your body had stabilized. Your INR or your, your blood work was now okay. By switching from simvastatin to Lipitor, it impacts warfarin or Coumadin differently. So what actually would occur is now 
your coumadin level would actually be thrown off. So the simvastat would actually increase your level. By switching to Lipitor, if nobody was aware of that interaction, now your blood work would actually go down. So you'd actually be at risk for having a clot. So again, this is why I strongly, strongly encourage it. It's not broken. Don't fix it. It's great to ask questions. It's great to ask for alternatives. But medications, as they interact with our body, are, um, are it's, it's very, very complex. And that's just two minutes, never mind five, six, seven, or eight. I think there was a question in the back. Yes, sir. The, um, I'm on lidocaine. I'm sorry? I'm on the lidocaine patch. Yes. And notice it's going generic. Yep. Does that automatically go generically? Or do I have to ask for it? Nope. So in the state of Massachusetts, great question. In the state of Massachusetts, when a generic product comes out, and, and this I'm going to get a little bit sort of um, technical, and it's considered A, B rated by the federal, by the uh, Food Drug Administration, it automatically has to be recommended um, and, and, and um, dispensed in the state of Massachusetts. So, this, so immediately, once a generic is available in the state of Massachusetts, the pharmacists um, within Massachusetts need to dispense the generic. So you will not actually need to ask for it. The only time the brand name medicine can actually be dispensed in the state of Massachusetts is if it actually is written on the prescription, um, or in today's world, through a lot of electronic medical records, a button is probably clicked that says no substitution, brand name medically necessary. You're welcome. Um, so th there are, so Cymbalta is probably the largest one on this list. Um, and then Detrol LA will also be uh, another very, very large one to actually go, go generic. Medication prices, as many of you know, um, vary from pharmacy to pharmacy. Um, so I would encourage, um, again, if you're looking to try to find a medicine that, that is, that is um, less expensive, that an, a potential alternative is that you could contact or actually shop pharmacy to pharmacy. Again, just be cautious, very, very cautious in doing that because just recognizing it is important that all your records are at one particular pharmacy. Also recognize that Health New England, when you are filling prescriptions from pharmacy to pharmacy, um, we capture all that data. So we also will provide information back to those specific pharmacies if we see a specific drug interaction or if we see something was recently refilled or if there's a potential conflict. So fortunately, you do have um, you have information available to other pharmacies, even if you're not filling it. But I would say, in general, it would definitely it, it's definitely best if you're filling something in one location, and if you're not, please provide that information to the pharmacist that is that is um, that is paying. <coughs> Sir, how do you know where these generics come from? Okay. So, so the question. So the question was. How do we know where these generics come from? Um, so, typically, the where it's coming from. While again, that that is a that is a definite concern, um, and at times there have been prescriptions that um, or, or medicines that have come from. I know there's been some issues at times when things have actually come from India um, and from other locations. Again, from an overall oversight standpoint by the FDA, the FDA does go in and evaluate the different sites. Um, unfortunately, in today's day and age, I mean, many people have heard Pfizer, Pfizer there, there's, there's a lot of counterfeiting that's actually happening out there today. So unfortunately, in today's day and age, it's important that you ask questions. And if you do sense something different, um, that, you, that you would ask the question. Again, all the medicines are where they're actually manufactured when, they're, when the wholesaler sending it to the pharmacy, it's on the labels. Um, can I state for certain that something in in offshore is worse than something made in the United States, specifically from a medicine standpoint? I would not say that there is a difference because again, recognizing that there is oversight by the Food Drug Administration at 
if it's made over overseas or if it is made within the United States. Does that answer your question? Uh, Belize, for example, versus uh, Pfizer. Yep. How do you know that? So, how do you? So, is the question how do I know where it's coming from? So you can ask the pharmacist. So when you go ahead and you actually um, are filling a prescription, you can ask, and it's the bottles themselves will actually state where the manufacturer. Some of the largest generic manufacturers in today's day and age. Um, one is Dr. Reddy's, which is actually it is a plant. Um, or a facility in um, in India, Teva, one of the other largest, actually the I believe the largest generic manufacturer is in Jerusalem, um, and has been a very very large um, manufacturer for for many years. And you know, again, recognizing that approximately 84 percent of all medicines throughout the United States that are dispensed are generic. Uh, I think what we what we sometimes focus on is, and it is important, is at times there may be some issues or maybe some concerns that have occurred within one plant. Again, just recognize while there are issues that occur in generic pharmacy plants, there are also issues that occur in brand name. Um, again, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, and others. Um, so just because something is made overseas, specific to medicine, um, does not mean it's, it's, it's inferior. I have a question. What is the difference between generic and regular medicine? I mean, why is one called generic and the other one's not? If it's, if it's the same ingredients, you have to build. So it's, it's the brand name medicine just has a patent. So that's, I mean, this is sort of terminology that the Food and Drug Administration actually mandates. Um, so brand name medicines have very, very specific um, that trademarks, um, and generic medicines do not have. Um, a patent line. I'm sorry, I can't. So the, the, just as good, the generic is just as good as the brand name? Yes, yes. Overall, overall, I can make that statement. Again, recognizing that people are individuals and recognizing certain therapies, like I mentioned earlier, certain transplantation drugs and certain seizure medications that need a specific level or a specific amount in your bloodstream, at times there can be some variation. And at least to help New England, whenever there are those types of scenarios, we do not mandate somebody to receive, um, mandate the generic. We actually will allow someone to receive the brand name in that instance. I sort of came up with um, sort of a most wanted list. Again, many of you um, may or may not be familiar with it, with some of these medicines. Again, they're all very, very common medicines and all good medicines in the right scenario. Um, so Celebrex, again, a very good medicine. Um, again, an average, from an average cost standpoint, the average cost of that medicine is approximately $300 per fill, while something like Meloxicam is available for about $15. Um, so the reason why I have this list up here is hopefully everyone in this room should feel empowered when they're having a conversation with their provider to ask the question. You know, is there, again, I understand everyone's on fixed budgets um, and nobody has 60, 70, 80, or 100 extra dollars on a month to month basis. So you should just ask your provider. At times there may or there may not be an alternative, um, but your provider or your physician should not, should not take it um, in a way that you're questioning their judgment. Again, um, unfortunately, you need to worry about your own finances. Similarly, similarly down this list, Presto, again, a very good medicine. Um, but again, especially today, you have medicines like Simvastatin and Atorvastatin, which is the generic for Lipitor. So you can obtain a drug like Lipitor today for approximately 40 or so dollars, while Presto costs approximately 140 or 160 dollars, and you'd be paying a brand name copay. Cymbalta, as I mentioned earlier, um, and again, as I mentioned, all very good medicines, but Cymbalta has some very similar, has a lot of similarities to the medicine called venlafaxine. Some of you may remember it, it was 
It was also, the brand name medicine was Effexor. Um, so again, 300 or so dollars versus approximately $15. Um, and sort of it's a similar theme as I, as I go down. So ways to prepare for the wild weather, the craziness of, of medicines in general. Um, you should, as we talked about earlier, you know, from a pricing standpoint, you can see a lot of variations at times within the prices of medicine by going from pharmacy to pharmacy. And again, if you're using your pharmacy card, you're using your health window card, and you're a health window member, that variation should be, should be minimal. But we do have different contracts with different pharmacies. We may have a different contract with a CVS versus a Costco. Um, so at times, you may see something less expensive at a Costco than you do at a, at a CVS. The, the three that I listed up there, Big Wise, Stop and Shop, Walmart, all have these $3.99 programs and these $4 programs. I would strongly encourage um, you at least evaluate those. Um, at times, you may be paying $10, $12 um, at, a, at a larger um, chain pharmacy, and you may be able to actually find these find these here. So, you know, saving $8 or $10 a month if you're on four or five different medicines can obviously really, really add up. Um, consider, at least from a co-payment standpoint, consider obtaining your medicines through mail order, um, at least with Health New England. Um, both Tier 1 and Tier 2 medicines you can actually obtain for two co-payments um, instead of paying three co-payments. So, if your co-payment is $30 for a $30 fill, by using mail order, you'd be paying $60 versus 90. So you'd be saving $30 a month in copayments. Um, pill splitting um, is something that we saw a lot and we still see somewhat with um, with Lipitor. I think there's a question over here if someone could bring a mic. <laughs> mail order, um, if you get all your prescriptions through mail order, would they follow the same process that they do through the pharmacies, if you're just saying that most of the things are made in the United States? Because I get mine through mail order, and I don't ever see where they're made. So when you're, when you're filling things at mail order, um, they do. They follow all the same rules and regulations um, as put in place by the health plan or by whomever owns the, the network. So they would follow the same, um, what you'd have to do in that case to find out where it's made. Again, similarly, you would need to call, at least for us, um, either Wellline um, or Catamaran and ask them specifically, again, read them, take the, if you take the pill out and you told them what specific pill you're asking about and what the imprints are on it, and they would be able to tell you exactly who makes it and where it's made. So, so the question is, why do you, I think why the medicines always seem to be changing? The, the, the look of the medicines seem to be changing, and, and, and it is. It's, it is contracting, it is pricing. Um, they're always looking to try to find something that is less expensive. Um, they obviously have a bottom line that they're attempting to manage as well. Um, but that is typically why you'll see um, your pills change on a regular basis. Looks like I'm actually starting to run over. Um, so again, I would strongly encourage you to talk to your local pharmacist or health plan about the costs. Um, the the last, second last bullet, actually, I want to make everyone aware of, um, because this is something actually that is very unique to Health New England. It's a program we actually have in place. Um, so you see there it says, ask your health plan about medication reconciliation or medication therapy management programs. Many of you are probably asking, what is that? Um, so if Whenever you're admitted into, into a hospital, like Bay State Medical Center, immediately what's occurring is there typically is either a nurse or a pharmacist that is attempting to better understand what medicines you are actually on, recognizing it's important to continue your medicine um, when you are admitted, because again, recognizing there could be problems if you don't continue the medicine. Um, so what Health New England actually does is we actually have a program recognizing when you're admitted to the hospital and when you're discharged, 
there's a lot of chaos going on, right? I mean, when you get home, when you get home, like the gentleman in front of you just laughed, when you get home, you're tired, you're confused, you sort of probably felt like um, you're pushed out the door. Um, so, and again, it's, 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 it's just, it, unfortunately, it is somewhat what is occurring in today's world. But we have a program that we actually put in place, and some of you have actually may have either been in it or have actually gotten um, phone calls. Um, we have a program called Dovetail. So Dovetail, what actually this program is, is we actually send a pharmacist to a member's home after being discharged to actually compare the medicines that they're on while they're in the hospital, compare the medicines they're on prior to going to the hospital, and compare the medicine list that they were discharged on, recognizing hospitals as well have their own list, list of medicine that they may have changed you to while you were in the hospital. So one in three admissions, I believe that's the most recent stat, one in three admissions um, into emergency rooms today are because of a medication-related issue. So either confusion, um, something, you know, you get discharged on a medicine and no one ever told you to stop taking this one, um, so you get home and you start taking both. Um, so that is the reason why we actually have put this program in place. We have seen some significant um, benefits. We've actually seen a very, um, we've seen about a 30% reduction in the people that actually have been discharged about going back into the hospital. Because that's one of the, that's a very common theme is when people are discharged, unfortunately, you end up being readmitted. So one of the things the health plan is attempting to do um, on behalf of you as members is we want to try to improve your overall quality and make sure you're not readmitted back into the hospital for many reasons. Um, obviously, it doesn't help us as, a, as an insurance plan, and it obviously doesn't help you as members. Um, and my last bullet there is see if you qualify for prescription advantage or extra help by calling 1 800 Medicare. Okay. That's it. Any questions? So, so the question was, so the question was, is when I had one of the medicines that were up there listed was Nexium as going generic, um, and she asked, will it be the exact same purple pill? I can't guarantee it's going to be purple. Okay, that's okay. It won't probably be purple, it'll probably be blue or something else, but the ingredients that will be in this purple pill or blue pill will be purple. Other questions? So question was, Zeddy, a medicine that's used for high cholesterol, when is that due to come out? I honestly don't know um, exactly when it is due to come out. Um, it, it's, it's, it, I believe it's still several years away, but I'm not 100% certain. Any chance of you using The question was, will Genuvia be going generic? Genuvia, I believe, is expected as well to be going generic in um, another, actually, about three years. Okay, I believe uh, we have our next speaker up, um, Tom Lynch, and I'm going to pass this over. But again, if anyone has any questions, um, I'll definitely be here for a few moments. And you can, uh, I'll let you probably be in the back over there to not disrupt the next speaker. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Teresa. Very well done.